Denver City life, living every night, getting it. All I see is green like it's night vision. My sight's different, my type driven. These niggas risking a life sitting over white flipping, but I ain't with it. I'm light skinned. My mind gifted intelligence in my disposition. Aristocratic image, and not to mention I'm nice with it. The ice drip over cardigan sweaters, tight fitting white linen. This is the type of shit that entice women. The fly shit that I'm on is passing. And welcome in. This is Real Deal Sports Talk with me, KP. We're gonna let this one breathe. This that shit that you can't do That's why your main boost Steady watching me How I make moves My high city life Got me way above the clouds Paint the audience a picture Every time I draw a crowd I hold my weight with these bars So make no mistake I get to cooking like Chef Curry and Golden State I'm motivated I'm taking off moving vertically Saying that they were seeing me Lyrically that's absurd to me Virtually murdering MCs on purpose Cutting their body parts into pieces Is verbal surgery You say you hot But you ain't burning to the third degree Time to bring some urgency in the state of emergency There's no comparison to us, that's way embarrassing I'm making something from nothing like ancient Native Americans Man, listen, I'm undergoing a transition My transmissions are filled with nothing but ambition No remorse on these rappers like a Roman force Snuck into the game on these suckers inside the Trojan horse Rappers like a Roman force Snuck into the game on these suckers inside the Trojan horse Hey, hey, it is February 10th, 2018 That was the Barbarians with their track City Life The Barbarians, Vivid Scientific and my boy Don Banks We go back to high school, we go back to middle school I've known these cats for a while. We're going to be playing their music on air week after week. And um, we'll even try and get them on the show. Let them, let them you know, sh- share their love, share their passion. Talk about what they got going on. And, uh, you know, who their favorite teams are. Who they're rooting for. What kind of sports stories they might have. So uh, look forward to that in the future. But do know we, we will have the Barbarians music on. Uh, exclusively for at least the foreseeable future on Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. So on today's show, I personally, I'm seeing the end of the empire, y'all. I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to let you know what I'm thinking. Uh, the Cavs, they went and just blew it, blew it all up this week. We'll get into that. And um, now that football is over, we're going to definitely start diving into some of these other sports. So I'm excited about that. Uh, we'll, we'll touch a little bit on the NBA today as well and some different stories that are going on there. So let's get into it. I want to start off with um, the Empire, the New England Patriots. Now, one of my key factors, I'm going to put this out there right now. One of my key factors to them, to the Empire coming to an end, was not the loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. All right, I'm, that is not included. That's not what I see. Um, yes, they lost their, their, the Brady and Belichick era lost their third Super Bowl out of the eight they've been to. The Patriots organization has been to 10 total. Um, but that, that aspect, that loss to Philadelphia, that one score loss, the, the turnover at the end of the game, um, that is not a factor in my determination. And what I see is the, the, the pieces starting to crack and crumble. Um, this is a team that for the last 17, 18 years, you didn't hear anything about the internal workings. Anything that was happening internally, you never heard about. Now, you might have heard about uh, uh, the videotaping or deflate gate or uh, this, that, or the other thing, uh, Aaron Hernandez, things like that. But the internal workings was always kept in shop. If there was a team fight, you didn't know about it. If there was a true medical report, you didn't know about it. Um, they, they've kept a tight ship. Their guys have kept their mouths shut for the most part publicly. Um, it's something to uh, be respected, quite honestly, with as hard as that would be to accomplish. 
But now, throughout this season, a little bit last season, and really towards the end of this season, you start hearing more about what's being said. You start hearing more tweets. You start seeing more reports about rifts. Um, things that you didn't used to see, whether they were there or not. We didn't hear it. We didn't see it. Now, here we are, Robert Kraft. To me, Robert Kraft, you have been one of the best owners in the NFL since you bought the Patriots. You turned that organization around. You made them a perennial winner. You made them a perennial champion and a perennial contender. With the money that you wanted to spend and the way you invested, the people you brought in the building to help you run that team. At this point, I'm sorry, but your ego has set in, okay? Um... Winning has gotten to the point that it has clouded your vision. You don't think you can do no wrong. The Midas touch is going to hurt you, sir. Um, your, this potential rift that is reported a couple weeks back with Brady and Belichick and Kraft, that's something you never would have heard about even if it really happened years ago. Now not only is it being reported about, but it's being talked about. His choice... This is an ego move to me. The choice to keep McDaniels. McDaniels shows up to say his, his goodbyes. And here goes Kraft with his ego. I'm not letting you go to Indy. I got to stick it to those guys as many times as I can because of Deflategate. So whatever happened in that conversation changed everything. Changed careers. Changed the focus of the New England Patriots. And changed the future of that team. Potentially picking Tom Brady over Bill Belichick and taking sides in this potential rift. That, to me, is going to have a long-term effect on this organization. Now it's in the psyche. Now we're having power struggles and pissing contests. Now I'm going to ban your personal trainer. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send your backup who you were keeping to get rid of Tom Brady. And I'm going to send Garoppolo to San Francisco. And then you look at Belichick. How many years does Belichick really have left? What does he have left to accomplish? He's been to eight Super Bowls. He's won five of them. He's innovated the game. The way that he makes changes and adjustments and seems to know when a player is going to lose their ability before everybody else. Knowing when to cut coaches free and when to change up the defense or offensive coordinator when to let some young know-it-all go test the market and then bring him back to the nest he's been making the right calls for a long time he's one of the greatest football minds and he could be out the door soon I mean, how many times can he re-up with a new set of coordinators, with a new set of this and that players, and achieve the same results? Right now, as long as he has Tom Brady, it seems like for a while. But does he have other aspirations? Is he getting to the age where he'd rather watch his sons, his two sons who coach for New England, watch them coach and follow their careers? Or his daughter who coaches college lacrosse? Does he want to, you know, spend more time traveling and watching her coach, um, Lacrosse is a love of his. Who knows? All of these thoughts, I'm sure, are going through Bill Belichick's head. Now, I expect him back for next season. I expect him back for at least the next two or three seasons. But I don't know how much after that. It's not like with Brady where we're looking at, uh, he's talking about going till 45, another five seasons. And with the way he played this season, I mean, you keep him healthy, you keep him upright, I don't see why he wouldn't be able to go that long if he didn't want to right now. Not that he looks spry and so athletic, because that's not Brady, that's not his game, that's not who he is. But he was on point, he was solid. He's not losing any of the zip off his pass. Like Marcus Ogden said on the show last week, what he's doing at 40, you don't see some of these older guys doing. 
You don't see the zip and the accuracy. You see them lose a few yards on their deep ball. And we're not seeing that yet. Now, Father Time could kick Tom Brady's ass tomorrow. That's for sure. All of a sudden, he could come back next season and it just not have it. It could happen. He could get hurt. Anything is a possibility. But 45, at this point, looks legitimate. Then you got a question, does Tom Brady have too much power? If this rift is real, if they really got rid of Garoppolo and sent him to San Francisco, does Tom Brady, because of the winning, because of the success, is he now looked at as, as um, the GOAT? Too much power. We can't upset the quarterback. The most important position on the field. We can't, we can't have him angry. Because if he got rid of Garoppolo, who would have been a nice transition for an aging quarterback, who somehow got himself $137 million with about $90 million or $86 million or something guaranteed, seven starts, 12 touchdowns, highest paid player in NFL history. If he's worth that much, do you know what Aaron Rodgers is going to get? $200 million. Do you know what Matt Ryan's going to get? 180, 190 million. They're talking Kirk Cousins 160 million. Are you kidding me? Talk about people that are scared so they're going to overpay for and cuz they don't want to miss out and set their team back. There's got to be a smarter way to do it than give guys that aren't the greatest the most money ever than to give guys who don't have anywhere near the stats or the production this type of money. Now, sure, it could all be there for Jimmy Garoppolo. It really could. That could be why, you know, Brady didn't want him sticking around this young buck stud behind him. Maybe that's it. Most of Brady's backups have gone somewhere and not done better than Brian Hoyer has. Or they've completely fallen on their face like ex-Belichick coordinators or personnel people. Hopefully that's not what happens in Detroit. I'm rooting for Bob Quinn. I'm rooting for Matt Patricia. I really hope you help us get to the Super Bowl. I'm interested and I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt until you do us wrong. Does Brady too have, have too much power? That's what it comes back to. That's what where I was at with the Garoppolo and got on a tangent, but whatever. McDaniels. And this is this is the stone, this is the final nail in the coffin. This is the piece that will crumble the empire and bring it all to the ground is Josh McDaniels. I have no respect for Josh McDaniels. I'm sorry. I in early in his career, I tried to you know, give him his respect for being an offensive mind. He came here to Denver, didn't have the offensive mind that I thought was going to transpire in Denver. Blew Denver completely up. Went to St. Louis, had one of the worst offenses while he was the offensive coordinator. Went back to Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. All of a sudden, he became good again. Now, okay, here we go. Super Bowl run. You know how it works. Assistant coaches and coordinators that are on teams that are still in the playoffs cannot interview during the weeks they have games. So you have the bye week in the playoffs, if you're one of the first two seeds, and you have the bye week before the Super Bowl to interview. You can't sign anything, so you're going on your word. And to a man, to a man, if you can't hold a man to his word, he is useless. You don't need him. That's not the kind of person you want to do business with. Because if he's done it to them, he'll do it to you. And it's shady. And the idea that, okay, he's got the, the right to change his mind. That is true. You do. Sure. Not at the last second. The idea that he's doing what's best for his family. Okay. Great, you should. But that should have been an important factor 
a month prior to the day you were going to have your press conference and sign your contract as the Colts' new coach. That should have happened before you started calling other people with families and offering them jobs and having them move to Indianapolis and having them sign contracts to be on your coaching staff. I don't agree with the way it went down. All of the same things could have happened. He could have changed his mind. He could have chosen his family. He could have stayed in New England. But waiting to the day you have your press conference, waiting for the day you go in the morning to pack your stuff before the flight to go to your press conference, that's wrong. You messed with too many people. You messed with too many people's lives, too many people's situations. And it's dirty. You can't say yes, still say yes, and then at the last minute say no. You can't. Now the Colts, they've already reached out to Frank Reich, the Philadelphia Eagles offensive coordinator. Leslie Frazier, working for the Buffalo Bills. And Dan Campbell, who is working for the Saints, for their new head coaching search. As they try and scramble here in February to fill the Colts coaching position. Which is a very uncertain team. Which just had a, a, a death. Whose quarterback may or may not be healthy ever again to play in the NFL. You don't do that. Now McDaniels, he shares an agent with the Colts GM, Chris Ballard. Right? So these guys, it was deeper than just the word. This agent had worked it out. They were all on the same page. The Colts, the agent, McDaniels. It was locked. It was as solid as you could get it without breaking, openly breaking the NFL tampering and coaching hiring rules. So Bob Lamani, he warned McDaniels that this is going to be the worst choice of your career if you go through with it. McDaniels went through with it. So Lamonte had no other choice but to terminate his relationship. His partnership, him being the agent of Josh McDaniels. And I would too. I don't, I'm not doing business with people like that. I'm done. You can't do that. And again, his time in Denver. He gets caught videotaping. He brings in Tim Tebow. He makes bad coaching decisions. He makes one little playoff game. He comes in the door like a tornado and he, he, he's destroying secretaries and interns and uh, yelling at coaches in front of other coaches and in front of the players and putting people down and trading the best players on the team because they don't fit personality wise with him. The only reason the Broncos didn't completely implode after Josh McDaniels was because they got Peyton Manning. Without Peyton Manning coming to town, he would have completely destroyed the Denver Broncos. They would still be a 5-10 and 10 team trying to rebuild, trying to get pieces to come here. Because they wouldn't have gotten a DeMarcus Ware. They wouldn't have gotten a, T a Talib, a Keep Talib. They would not have gotten T.J. Ward or, or Stewart or Emmanuel Sanders or all of those other veteran free agents that signed with the Broncos and helped them go to and win one Super Bowl and get destroyed in another. But those players would not have come to town. They would not have righted the ship as fast. He goes to St. Louis, has one of the worst offenses in the NFL during his time in St. Louis. Clearly not the mastermind we all thought he is without having that guy, that Tom Brady guy, that he works so well with. So did Robert Kraft sweeten the deal with just money? Or was it that he offered him, you know, you're going to proceed Bill Belichick as the next head coach? What kind of security was it that made it a better situation for his family? And then what makes them think that as these NFL players see this happening, that any top not free agent is going to go, yeah, I want to play for a guy like that. I'd, I want to go play for New England still. They still, they're where it's at. It's not going to happen if that's the transition. That's the end of the empire. McDaniels takes over. 
players do not want to play for him. He doesn't treat people the right way. We constantly hear reports like that here in Denver from his time here in Denver. I don't think he can handle the power that comes with being a head coach. I think it puts him on too much of an ego trip, and he loses it. And then he bounced on his word. And again, to a man, you can't respect my word. You can't follow through on your word. I can't do business with you. I can't, I can't be around you. I don't need you. I can't play for you. You can't teach me. That's the end of the empire. The ego. McDaniels. The loss of Belichick and Brady that is forthcoming. It's begun. It has begun. All right, so other things going on in the world of sports, right? There's lots going on outside of football. We have been focusing solely on football since the beginning of the NFL season. Barely talked about anything else. Um, So some of the big stuff that happened this week. NBA trade deadline. We'll get right into it. The Olympics started this week. I'm not much of a Winter Olympics guy, but mad respect for the athletes, all the work you put in. I will be watching. We'll talk about the Winter Olympics a little bit more next week as we have more results coming in. Um, But congratulations to all of those athletes who work so hard out there in Pyongyang, uh, South Korea, doing your thing. Um, Cleveland has blown it up. What happened in Cleveland? The the LeBron Cavaliers, the Cleveland Cavaliers. We have all these reports and rumors that LeBron's cursing out the 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 team brass, and Dan Gilbert doesn't want LeBron around anymore. Is he going to be in L.A., San Antonio, Houston, Golden State? Make the jump to the NFL? Is he a traitor for wanting to 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 be successful and win? Uh, because he didn't do it the way other guys did it. Well, the business has changed, so of course not. Different generation, different time, different game. No, he's not a traitor. Don't make me laugh. The Atlanta GM coming out and saying that LeBron is the one who started the rumors about Golden State. Okay, great. Maybe he did. I don't think so. He didn't say where or why or how. He just said LeBron is the one who said it. Um... Whatever. Trade deadline comes up this week. Cleveland's clearly in turmoil. They haven't been winning a lot lately. They're old. Uh, They're falling back. LeBron goes for a triple-double. Trade deadline hits. What does Cleveland do? Everybody's speculating. You know, they're going after this guard. They're going after this guard. They're going after this center. Um, So... Trade deadline's a huge deal. What's going to happen? Some people are saying they should go ahead and trade LeBron James if he's not going to resign. So, in trades, Cleveland gets rid of Isaiah Thomas to the Lakers. Dwayne Wade goes back to Miami. Derrick Rose goes to Utah. Iman Shepard's out the door. Jay Crowder's out the door. Channing Fry's out the door. Cleveland's first-round pick this year, and... Miami's second round pick in 2020 all out the door. So basically they just got rid of every free agent that they've gotten last summer or trade they made. They got finally were able to ship Iman Shumpert who they've been trying to get rid of. And then Channing Fry, who's been pretty consistent from the three point line when needed and doesn't play much. Who do they bring back? Larry Nance Jr. from the Lakers, Jordan Clarkson from the Lakers, George Hill, who was in Sacramento, Rodney Hood from Utah, and a 2020 Miami second round pick. Okay, so what happened there? They got younger. Okay, I see they got younger. They got a little more athletic, I guess. Um... They kept a pick. They gained a pick. They didn't have to get rid of the Brooklyn pick. Um, Maybe they're trying to cut cap space for max contracts. But how is that going to help Cleveland if your owner wants to get rid of LeBron? Nobody's coming to Cleveland on a max deal to play with that roster without LeBron. 
So I, I don't know how it's going to work out. There's, what, 25, 30 games left in the season. It's going to be something special if the Cavs, they'll make the playoffs. But for them to make a finals run with this team with that amount of time, for them to gel and somehow get it together and make it work, that's going to be something special. Um, there's talk that maybe they try and bring back a Kendrick Perkins to give him some extra help down low, maybe even just some fouls in the playoffs. <laughs> I don't know. Cleveland is a mess right now. I wouldn't be surprised at all if LeBron James ends up anywhere else with another couple of his buddies or some other young talent and makes another run with another team. And I won't be mad at him either. All right, we're going to get into some NBA talk real quick because, you know, Cleveland leads into the NBA. And we haven't really talked about what was going on so far in the NBA, but let's look at the current standings, um, conference standings, of course. Uh, Toronto has moved into that number one seed um, in the Eastern Conference. They have a half-game lead currently on Boston. Cleveland's the third slot then you got washington milwaukee indiana miami and philadelphia rounding out the eight um seeds right now detroit and charlotte could make a move uh probably won't for charlotte detroit it could be close with philly there for that eighth slot as they are only a game back the knicks lost porzingis so i wouldn't expect anybody other than maybe detroit to get in to the lower end of the eastern conference with uh, the time that's left. Western Conference wise, you got Golden State 1, Houston 2, San Antonio 3. Anybody surprised yet? Uh, Minnesota, Portland, OKC, Clippers, and then the Nuggets. Surprising Clippers to me, that's a surprising one. Um, they're actually tied, um, they're both 13 games back from first place with the Nuggets. Um, Nuggets have won 29 and lost 26, and the Clippers are 28 and 25. Um, New Orleans is right there with the Nuggets and the Clippers. The Jazz could make a move from where they're at. If the Lakers somehow hit magic in this last little bit, they could make a run. They're not too far back from those teams, but I doubt it. Um, Utah, New Orleans, and Denver, and the Clippers, those four teams would uh, fight for the last two spots in the NBA uh, playoff race, I guess you'd call it, at the end of this season. Um, stats leaders. I don't even know what's going on with the stats leaders right now. I know I've, James Harden's been balling out. Westbrook's been doing his thing. Um, point leaders, James Harden, 31 points a game. The Greek Freak, 27 points per game. Curry right there at 27. Anthony Davis and LeBron James round out the top five. Assist leaders, you got Russell Westbrook, James Harden, LeBron James, Ben Simmons, and Draymond Green in Golden State. And defensively rebound leaders, Drummond, DeAndre Jordan, DeMarcus Cousins, who went down, unfortunately is out for the season, Dwight Howard, and Carl Anthony Towns are the top five there. In blocks, Porzingis, who, who, you know, we all know he, ACL, he's done for the season. Miles Turner, Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, and Clint Capella of Houston are the top in blocks. In steals, you got Paul George, Eric Bledsoe, Chris Dunn, Jimmy Butler, and Victor Oladapo, Oladipo um, as your top five steal guys in the NBA right now and of course we all saw Paul George getting chanted for the other night in LA we want George we want George I don't know if fans can be called with tampering the Lakers just got that tampering charge on Magic Johnson uh, they might want to be careful with all that nonsense but it looks like Paul George to me would love to be in there it's like he was fighting back the smile when they started chanting um, but it's interesting. I'm excited. Football is over. We're going to get to focus on uh, so many other sports and dive into what's going on across different areas. The NBA, baseball is going back soon. You Darvish signed with the Cubs today on that six-year, hundred and 
got a hundred and whatever million dollar contract he got. We'll get into the NHL as you know, we're coming down to the end of their season. WWE, MMA, we're going to talk about it all. Of course, with the football updates coming in, because there's really no off season for football, as they say. There's just no games being played currently. So, you know, I'm excited. Like I said, we're going to dive into all of these sports. We're going to start broadening everything back out a little bit, dissecting, seeing what's going on for each of them respectively. Um, I do want to shout out DMAC of 104.3 The Fan here in Denver. I had a chance to exchange some uh, texts or some tweets with him this week. He gave me some great advice, so thank you for that, DMAC. Um, check out the webpage, Real Deal Sports Talk with KP.com. Um, for info on the Barbarians, uh, we have them linked on the show now uh, under the Check Us Out page. Uh, they are the music we use on the show. We have uh, info on how you can contact Marcus Ogden and follow his what he's doing uh, with his public speaking. And um, there's more to come. We're only going up from here. You know how we do. Until next time, keep it real. Mindless flow, mommy said she's trying to roll. I told that bitch to find the dough. I ain't got no time for these bitches on my grind for dough. Rock a couple shows remote. We lick a designer clothes. Not to mention my fits is situated with shining low. I can sense the hate from the gate when I step inside the dough. Straight to the bar we go. Line a few shots up in the row. Knock them back and slam the glass as hard as dominoes. We ain't even dancing, just standing on couches like a row. Fuck security and the club owner already know. Bitches mesmerized by the hate. The eyes and the wavy flow Niggas hating harder than Satan Waiting before they crawl But I ain't near shaking I stand as broad like a solid stone Antagonizing niggas by waving the double shot of Tron This that ignorant shit you like to hear on a song It ain't gotta be real when the fake your shit is getting on Yeah, let's get it on Pockets full of rotten chrome Bottles popping and models jocking hot Now let's get it on Drug traffic and guns clapping rather Let's get it on It ain't gotta be real when the fake your shit is getting on Yeah Let's get it on, hustle to the early morn Strip plugging, we been thugging Cousin, let's get it on Long as the beat's hard, we can say whatever the fuck we want It ain't gotta be real when the fake and shit is getting on I clean up on the scene, so B.I.G. like Papa RBG red, black, and green, we blowing trees like Rasta Counting money from ounces on top of the Rocky Mountains We cocky, never conceded, confident, I repeat it Beat it like Michael Jackson, I'm active, I like the actions Fashion sharpening, samurai sword, swinging assassins We passing rappers rapidly, so careful who you gassing Money back, guaranteed, just maximum satisfaction You know 9 to 5, it's every day, this overtime I'm putting in work, on the grind till I'm in the dirt I'ma tell you for whatever's worth, don't turn it down, we gotta turn it up Rock the heat, we can burn it up. They never heard of us until we step on stage, killing shit 'cause we murder us. You got to do what you have to do. Coming up fast on the avenue until reality starts smacking you all in the face. You black and blue. Now it's go time, and we've been patiently waiting. Let's get it on. But too long, y'all been basically faking. Yeah, let's get it on. Pockets full of rotten chrome, bottles popping and models jockin' hot. Let's get it on. Drug traffic and guns clapping, rather let's get it on. It ain't gotta be real when the fake shit is getting on. Yeah, let's get it on. Hustle to the early on. Strip club and we've been thuggin'. Cousin, let's get it on. Long as the beat's hard, we can say whatever the fuck we want. It ain't gotta be real when the fake shit is getting on. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Get, 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 let's get it on.